I want to remind you that we are about to lose a year. It's finished. It's gone. And I want to leave a few thoughts with you and also give you a few thoughts to go forward. I want to speak to you for a few minutes on redeeming time. I want to focus on the 10 keys to maximizing and redeeming time. Please write this statement down. It may be a good place to start. And that is the most common gift that God ever gave any human is time. And when I use the word common, I'm referring to the fact that all humans on earth the only thing that we are given that is common to everyone is time. All of us are different heights, different weights, different colors, pigmentation, different economic strata, different families from different ethnic backgrounds. We are from different cultures. But one thing we all have in common, and I'm talking about 7.2 billion people on earth have the same common commodity, and that's time. Why is that so important? Because of the next statement. And that is, what you are and what you become depends on how you use your time. You and I have the same amount of time. The billionaire and the beggar both have 24 hours every day. The old and the young, the black and the white, the Indian and the Asian are all given the same amount of time every day. So really, point number three becomes very logical. And that is, time cannot be stopped. But humans can control it. You cannot stop a day. You cannot stop an hour. They have no respect for you. But you can control how it will be used. Which means that even though time is unstoppable, it is controllable. And what you do with it determines who you become. Can you honestly say to yourself that you used 2013 effectively? I think about time a lot. Because time is life. And every time a year passes, you are basically measuring time. Because a year is the passing of time in our cultures. And an opportunity to redefine your priorities is why new years come. Let me ask you to make a note of a couple of suggestions I want to make. First of all, a new year is an opportunity to refine your purpose, to go back and check it. Secondly, a new year is an opportunity to redefine your life's vision, to see if you are still on course or if you need to adjust. Thirdly, a new year is an opportunity to re-establish worthwhile goals. And I use the term worthwhile because some of our goals may not be worth pursuing anymore. And fourthly, a new year is an opportunity for you to bury the past and move into a new future. I love New Year's Day. Because the very word new 
means that there was an old one somewhere. In other words, time is a blessing or a curse depending on how you manage it. A couple of things about time. Time is life. If I ask you how old are you, what I'm asking you is what is your life? And you would say my life is 80 years old or 30 years old or 15. We measure life in terms of time. We define life by time. Life is measured by time because life is determined by what we do with time. Life is lived out in time. Life is qualified by time. Life is also the passing of time. Uh, what, what have you become is totally dependent on how you use time. Life is also stopped by time. When you die, time stops. When you die, you move out of time into what they call eternity. In essence, death is life leaving time. So we are about to cross into another period of what we call time. We call it a new year. And time is temporary, but life is eternal. We were put in time to live a portion of life. And here's what I discovered about time. What is time? Time is an interruption in eternity. Time is also defined in my book as a small measure of eternity. Time is the piece of eternity. Time is, is a slice of forever with a beginning and an end. Time is the limited period during which an action or a process exists or takes place. In other words, time is the measure of space. Time itself has its own power. I was thinking about this last night when I read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and you might want to read that with me. Verse 10, it says, I have seen the burden God has placed on all men. He has made everything beautiful in what? In its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men that they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. This statement is loaded and I don't want to touch much of it, but I just want to make sure you understand the word beautiful. The word beautiful there is the Hebrew word that means mature, which means that God matures everything in its time. So there's a time for maturity. In other words, God created time, but he doesn't live in it. And therefore, when God speaks to us, we got to be careful. God lives in forever, but he places us in time. He designed time to make life easier for us. God created time to give a piece of eternity a measure, and he put us in it. And God created time for us to live in it so that we could experience relief from eternity. I mentioned this some time ago and I'll say it again. If you lived in eternity, it's a tough place to live. I used to wonder why God told Adam, don't touch the tree of life. And when Adam sinned, the first thing God did was kicked him out of the garden and he put a flaming sword with cherubim and the Bible says to protect the tree of life. If Adam had gotten to that tree after he had sinned, we would be without hope. Because if you make a mistake in eternity, it's an eternal mistake. I thank God for time. Time is a relief. Time is good news. Look at Genesis 1.14. It tells you when God created time. It says, and God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark what? Seasons and days and years. So God created time by literally designing the universe to keep time. Many scientists interpret the universe as a big clock and they say that someone must have wound it up they try to explain that there must have been a creator because the universe is running with such precision that the planets not only are revolving around 
stars, but they don't clash into each other. Someone seemed to have set this in motion. And God had designed all of that so that they can be measured for days and years. In other words, God says in verse 18, this is good. Everybody say time is good. What's the purpose for time? I found this interesting. First of all, time was given to us to take us out of eternity. Secondly, time was given us to protect us from forever. If you had a pain in your back in eternity, it would be an eternal pain. Thank God for time. Time has a beginning and an end. Time is also given to us to measure existence of life, to define life, to measure the quality of life. Time is given to us to account for our lives and to define the distance between our beginning and our end. Time was given to us to live life in doses. Time was given to us to measure the purpose of our life, why we live. I thank God for time. But time has some limitations, and I want to just quickly go over them. Job chapter 14 says, and this is a verse you probably want to remember if you're still breathing. Verse 5. Let's read it together out loud. Go. Man's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and let him alone, Lord, until he has what? Put in his time like a hired man. That's in the Bible. God said, look, when I gave you birth, I hired you to do something, and I got a certain period for you to do it in, and you can't exceed that. Have you noticed that the last couple of weeks or days, a lot of folks been dying suddenly? Do you know why? They ain't supposed to cross over. And some of you are here tonight, and maybe you're supposed to cross over, but you only got one month into the next year. You better get saved now. Look at that verse again. God says what? I have set limits that you cannot exceed. Sometimes you wonder why my husband died, my wife died, my child died, and I outlived them. It couldn't be because it was just the limit. You ain't supposed to be dead yet. Determined. Time is determined. Write this down, please. Very important. Psalm 39, verse 4. Write it down. I want you to say it out loud. Read it. Lord, make me know mine end and the measure of my days. What it is that I may know how frail I am. In other words, I am only here for a breath of time. So let me know what? Let me know mine end. Let me know my destiny. Let me know what I'm supposed to do with my life. Quickly. I like this one, Psalm 90, verse 12. Read out loud. Go. So teach me, us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In other words, let me know how long and how much I have to do so I can use my days effectively. I like this one, Ecclesiastes 8, verse 6. Read out loud. Go. For there is a proper time and a procedure for every matter under heaven. This is a deep one here. In other words, there's a proper way and time to do everything. Time is so powerful in the, man, in the hand of God. Here's something I thought was interesting too. Time is measured in seconds. We saw that a moment ago by that video. And we are amazed sometimes at how fast time can leave us. And we measure time in minutes and hours and days and decades and, and centuries. But time measures life. Also in yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I like this one. Whatever you've been through in 2013, you can now say it was last year. Isn't that good? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I was broke last year. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I lost my house last year. Say it. So you all straight to say that one, hey. In other words, whatever happened in the past, separates you from the future. That's how good time is. I put it this way. Time measures life in past, 
present, and future. Tell your neighbor, that's my old girlfriend. <laughs> Say it, I used to be sick. That was yesterday. Health is on the way. Time separates your past from your present and your future. Make a note of this. Time measures life in seasons, winter, summer, autumn, and spring. Because time measures, protects us from living in a permanent condition. You won't be a divorcee all your life. Time will prove that. You won't hurt with grief all your life from the death of your family. Time will deal with that. You won't be sitting around because that man didn't marry you. There's another man on the way with a fantastic life with plenty more money than the one you was trying to get. Time will sort this out. Give God a big praise right there, some of y'all. Praise the Lord, Sister Claudine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, boy, say time changes everything. Nothing is permanent in time. Make a note of this one, please, and this is very important. Time is the only commodity on earth given equally to every human being. Time is, therefore, the only commodity every human possesses. We don't possess the same amount of money. We possess the same amount of time. So the key to life is what you become in life is determined how you use the time you have. And that's why we use terms like spending time. Time is a currency. Every human has the same amount every day. And time, like currency, must be spent. And here's the problem. Time is used to buy life. So whatever you are, you spend your time buying it. Even if you're broke, you use your time to become broke. If you're fat, oh dear, you use your time eating the wrong thing. You use your time not jogging. You see, time determines everything. If your marriage is under stress, it's because you haven't used your time in your marriage properly. Time is so powerful that whatever you invest your time in, you become. You got one new year about to start. My question is, what you going to do with the next 12 months? And what you going to buy by December 31st, 2014? What are you going to look like? What are you going to have or not have? There are some people in your life you need to drop in 2014. Why? They ain't helped you in 2013. In other words, time gives you time to change relationships. I put it to you, friends, that you can actually treat time just like money. Write this down. You can have time stolen. How many of you sat with people for two hours? When you was finished, you wasn't sure what happened. I mean, two hours of your life gone, and they talk to you, and you gained nothing. The older I get, the less time I have to just listen to talk. I don't know about you, but you ain't old enough yet. There's a certain period in your life where you realize, I ain't got time for this. People just kind of wonder in your life, let's talk. Talk about what? Hmm? Write this down. Time can be what? Abused. Time can also be lost. You can lose it, just like money. Time can be squandered, just like money. You can spend an entire day. Have you ever said this? I don't know where the day gone. Oh, yeah, I know, that's right. Why? You squandered it. It didn't take you closer to your goals, didn't take you closer to your vision, didn't accomplish the things you wanted, and you spent it and squandered it on stuff that didn't count. Time is more important than money. That's why the businessman say time is money. Can I put it another way? Write this down. Time can be depreciated just like money. Time can also be devalued. Every hour is important. My question is, what are you spending it on? 
You can reduce the value of your life by the things you spend your time with, who you spend your time with, where you spend your time all day. You can devalue your time. Can I suggest this? The time can also be revalued. You can actually increase the value of your time by choosing what you do with it. I learned years ago, if you broke and I broke, you was bad company. <laughs> You're laughing. I'm a serious brother. You know, you, know, you complain, I complain, and we just one big complaining party. Somebody got to get out of here. You ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. We end up nowhere. I'm out of here. You can revalue your time by just adjusting your relationships. The books you read. I mean, I've seen people read them love novel books. A love novel book don't take you to your goals. You know, Sam kissed Susan. And they went for a cruise along the river. Listen, man, you broke. You need another book. <laughs> Clap. <laughs> you got to revalue your time. Change your library. Go dump some books when you go home tonight. And buy all of my books in the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Not a one of my books is a waste of time. Do you agree with that? Because I use my time to produce those books and they're valuable. Because I use my time to give my time value. People spend all kinds of money on magazines. And you still got problems. Time. You can become a victim of time. Write this down, please. You can never stop time. You can also never control it. You can't resist it. You can't compromise with, never compromise with time. Time doesn't adjust for you or nothing. You never tell anybody, you know, uh, tomorrow, wait till I reach. No, tomorrow coming anyhow. You can't, you can't touch it. Uh, you can never buy time. You can't buy it. You can never slow time down. You can never speed up time. Until that, you are stuck in time. You are victims. And therefore, all you have to do to make time your friend is to manage it. This is what I've come to appreciate. You can measure time in life. I read this verse, and, and this bless me, uh, Psalm 90, verse 10. Out loud, read it together. Go. The length of our days is 70 years. This is God is saying now. You've got 70 years. Then what? Or 80, if we have the strength, yet those span is but trouble and sorrow. <laughs> For they quickly pass and we fly away. He's okay. The average age of a human, God says, would be between 70 and 80. Okay, so if you're 30, guess how much you got left? And 10, 10 of them are going to be with a walking stick. My father's here tonight. Boy, I tell you, I'm so jealous of my daddy. He's 89 years old. Stand up, dad. This is my dad. That's how I look when you're 89. He can be 90 in May. <laughs> 90 years old. <sighs> Thank you, dad. He ready to run a marathon. <laughs> My wife, you a blessed woman. That's how old I can be. <laughs> I got good genes, praise the Lord. He says, you have, you have about 70 years, good years, he says. What are you going to do with them? If you have 40, how many you got left? 30. What do you do with time? Write this down. First of all, you can manage it. Secondly, you can use it. Thirdly, you can invest it. Fourthly, you can convert it. In other words, you can use time to develop and build and construct things. You can, you can turn your life into value by the way you use your time. You can use time to fulfill your divine purpose. Time itself is given to you as a gift from God. And so Ephesians 5 says, wherefore, stay awake. Wake up, wake up, wake up. That's what the verse says. What? Wake up. Why? Because you can live your whole life sleeping. Read, in the, read, 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 read the rest of the verse. Read it. Awake thou who sleepest, and arise from the dead. Even Christ himself 
wants to shine upon you. Verse 15. Look therefore carefully at how you walk, not as unwise, but as what? Wise. And then he says what? Redeem the time, because the days are full of evil. Redeem the time. I was doing this with my life for the last 40 years, maximizing every minute of my life. I started when I was a teenager. When my friends were playing marbles, I was reading the Bible. When my friends were looking for a girlfriend, I was writing songs. When people, when people were, were reading magazines, I was reading scripture. So don't get jealous of me. I use my time differently. I am a product of how I use my time. How many times have you read the Bible this year? Did you ever read the Bible this year? So do you know God's word? Your life is how you use your time. Look at the next verse. He says what? Therefore, be not foolish, but understand what the will of God is. And be not what? Drunken with wine, where there is there's riot, and be filled with the Holy Spirit, he says. Redeeming the time, using it properly, making sure that you invest it in a way that it benefits you. Uh, the word redeem, I want to leave with you tonight. Write the word deem down. The word deem actually means to own something. To redeem something means to own it again. So when the Bible says redeem time, it means you had some time that you messed up, you lost it, you threw it away. He said, now spend the next year making up for what you lost. That might mean you may just stay up a little later, cut off some friendships, shut down some clubs you were part of, change relationships with some of these organizations that ain't taking you nowhere, take an evening class. To redeem means that you can't have a normal life anymore because you lost some time you got to make up for. To redeem time means you got to work a little harder. To redeem time means that you got to actually be more focused and more disciplined. To redeem time means that you may need to throw off some things that were so nice and pleasurable to do some things that are important. Redeem the time. I like this one here. It means to recontrol time. It means to repossess and reclaim time. It means to fill the pledge that God promised you to fulfill. To redeem time means to convert time now into value. To redeem time means to fulfill or pay an outstanding debt. When I saw that in Hebrew, it's amazing. To redeem means to pay the debt that you owe. Not just to God, but to your life. If you wasted five years, you have a debt to yourself. You have to pay yourself back the time you lost. I hope that 2014 is the year that you double up on everything. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you get back on course and focus double on what you're supposed to have done. Can I put it this way? Ephesians 14 says what? That is why he said, wake up, O sleeper. Make the most of every opportunity. Ephesians 5 verse 15. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of what? Every opportunity. Because the days are full of distractions. Everybody trying to get your time. And half of them don't deserve it. I was reading the Bible one time. It was just protecting me as a teenager. I've been 18 years old when I read this. Because, you know, I was like you. And you know, I wanted to be, like, you know, I want to impress people. I want to get, give. I'm, I'm a lover. So I give to everybody. So I give to everybody who is poor, I give them. A guy came to me half drunk. He said, give me a dollar. I give him a dollar. A guy came to me smoking grass. He said, I need some food. I give him money. One day I read in the Bible. The Bible says, give with discretion. Do you know what that means? That means you got to assess who asking you for something, including your time. I want to see you. Why do you want to see me? And when we get together, what are we going to talk about? You'll be amazed. In my position, you'll be amazed how many people want to see me. And I got to be very careful. A couple of times I sit with people, and they say, I want to see it's okay, make an arrangement, you know, we sit down, an appointment, sit down. And they go, so what do you want to talk about? <laughs> Wait a minute. You asked to see me. <laughs> then they'd say, what the Lord telling you to tell me? <laughs> huh? No, that just happens so common. And I'm like, what? I said, the Lord told me to tell you, go away. 
because you 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 the one who called the meeting you got a word of prophecy for me nope but I'll give you one if you want one whatever thou doest do it quickly go this is serious people will abuse your time write this down out loud please say it take it go to take ownership and control of your time that's what it means to redeem time to convert into opportunity to fulfill your purpose that's how you redeem time in other words you design your days to create value in your life let 2014 be the year you design every day and the way you control time is by planning you got to plan your day or your day will be planned by somebody else time like all commodities must be managed time must be protected it must have a focus it must have a purpose it must have a vision it must be measurable in results I spent two hours with you now can I measure how you gained and I gained or did we just blow the wind what are you gonna do with the next 12 months I'm not talking about the, about the 12 months you, you had that's gone you got one more time God's given you. In other words, time is putting worth on your energy. Can you put this down? The 10 keys to redeeming time. This is what I want to end on. Write this down. Number one, here's how to redeem time. Everyone should write this down. I'm giving you a key to 2014 right now. Here's how to redeem every day. Number one, document a plan. Put a plan for what you want to accomplish in 2014. Put it on paper. Number two, establish your priorities based on that plan. This is very important. Number three, pursue your passion only. Identify your passion and go after it in 2014. Because so many people will distract you. You better stay with your passion. Not every invitation is a blessing. Not every opportunity is a blessing. The devil's greatest weapon to a disciplined woman and man is distraction, not sin. The devil knows you're too smart to commit sin. So he does something more dangerous. He distracts you to do things that you ain't supposed to be doing, even though they're good. Matter of fact, the enemy of doing the right is doing a good thing and not everything is good is right number four protect your plans and your priorities everybody say it protect listen to me I know what I'm talking about you will be attacked by so many opportunities you got to protect your time and your priorities from other people's interests Hey man, I got an idea. Yeah, but that ain't my idea. And if I go after your idea, that can take me off course of my assignment. It's not a bad idea, it just ain't my idea. You gotta protect your priorities. What's number six? Out loud, read. So number five, read. Identify your value. In other words, identify what's valuable to you. If you don't do that, you're gonna waste time. Number six. Make decisions based on your destiny. If you know where you want to go, then design your decisions accordingly. Because everyone wants your time. Number seven, this is an important one, inventory your associations. I want you to spend the, la the first day of this new year just making a list of all the people you associated with, all the organizations you associate with, all the places you associate with, and see how many of them is taking you to your vision. You'll be shocked who is wasting your time. Number eight, review your investments. Question, what are you investing your time in? People spend hours watching television. Always watching LMN. I mean, I go to visit some people, everybody got LMN on. This, these ladies get, yeah. and then movies, all they got is killing and stuff, you know, little robbing and little adultery here. And I'm sitting there going, you spend every day eating this stuff, consuming your time. 
Do an inventory. Number nine, do not try to please everyone. If you want to redeem your time, stop trying to make everybody happy. You cannot make everybody happy. Half of the folks who are smiling at you don't like you. Get over it. And the rest of them, they're only putting up with you. So you... <laughs> Boy, you all do understand. Humans, humans will help you do nothing and then they go on and do something without you. You have to redeem your time by reviewing who you're trying to please. There's some people you're trying to please who don't like you. I like what Jesus said. He said, I live to please my father. I live to get the approval of my father. Stop trying to get everybody's approval. Everyone will not like what you do. They don't even want to do what you do. You have to be very careful how you redeem that moment. And number 10, write it down, it's the big one. Forget the past and pursue and design the future. Design 2014. Design it. Become an architect of life. This takes a little bit of exercise to do it. You know, you got to sit down and spend time. But you have to sit down and design your year. Otherwise, you will live somebody else's year. They're going to give you their architectural drawings. Anything that happens should be in association with where you want to go in life. I leave you with this word, with my heart beating with great passion. You have been wasting enough time. It's over. Do something. Get back on track. Control your future by making a plan. Forget about what you didn't accomplish. Don't be your own depression. It's okay to look at the past. Last scripture, Jesus, a verse you never saw before, John 7 verse 9. Let's read it together. Go. Therefore, Jesus said, the right time for me has not yet come. But for you, you people, any time is right. He had a sense of time. And then he says what? The world cannot hate you, but it has hated me because I testify of what it does is evil. You go to the feast. Go ahead. He says, go, 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 go to the party. I am not yet going up to this feast because for me, the right time has not yet come. There's some things you ain't supposed to do yet. And some folks want you to go and do it now. If you know God's will and you document God's vision for your life, it will also control how you pace your life. I put this at your feet, young man, sir, young woman, mother, father. I beg you, single woman, single man, let this be the last year you waste. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the spirit of conviction, rebuke, correction, and instruction in righteousness. At this moment, we cross over in this country Many have already done so. But we are closing the door on a year right now. And we say goodbye. We will never see 2013 again until we get before you. And you will review our lives. You will judge us how we use it. Therefore, we promise you tonight, we're going to manage 2014 better. We are going to take these simple keys and, and begin to restructure our lives. Oh Lord, you gave us another year. We thank you.